Welcome everyone to another video of how to make some simple yet effective 3D printable wargaming terrain. In this video, I'm going to show you two types of sculpting programs. The first one here, as you can see, is SculptGL, a WebGL sculpting program that's web based. It's from, if I pronounce this right, StephenEigener.com slash SculptGL slash where they probably have other products. At any rate, this is one that is free. And I'm going to be making some trees today. So, as you can see, we got topology settings. Don't worry about those. Rendering. I am going to change it to clay. And, I mean, you can choose your shader type. Ooh, rainbows. UV. And matcap. Let's keep on matcap. We'll close that. Now, basically, all your tools are going to be down in here. I'm going to start with the move tool because I want to. Hang on a second. Uh, what was it? Radius. And then. So, I should probably mention that the left mouse button does all the actions. Right mouse rotates your camera, middle mouse zooms in and out. And pressing down pans. There's also some quick camera keys. Uh, reset with, well, this doesn't work here. Spacebar, front, F, top, etc. And then you got perspective, or new graphic. Let's leave on perspective for now. I don't know what else. You know, let's go through history. Basically, your control Z and control Z and all that so also works. Under scene, you will find clear, which would clear this out, like so. Then you can go back to atmosphere. I don't know what let's even do with that. I'm going to add in a cylinder. Let's go to cube and the torus, which is a tube of all things. But let's start with a cylinder. And of course, it puts it back to skin. Copy, selection, delete, selection, dark and unselected. Show me your line. I'm not worried about that. Of course, you got your scale, RBG. You can add objects. Apply STL, those are the formats it supports, and you can export. And there's Sketchfab. Woohoo! Well, what that is. Um, save diffuse, roughness, metalness. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and sculpt our tree. And just to make a note, this tree that I am sculpting is going to be used for that moss product and get the dollar store. And I'm going to do up two types. I'll do up a simple one here in this program, and I will do up another type that can be easily 3D printed in the other program to be announced. Now, because I totally forgot this program includes a cylinder, I won't need the move tool. We're going to go to drag. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to drag out and make some roots. Now there is symmetry and there's only the two levels of it. Um, let's disable that so we can make some little more unique roots. In this program what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the roots and just dragging them past the box or the grid on the bottom. There we go. Uh, I don't want that. Let's make it a, make a radius smaller here. Oh, too small. Oh, well, hold down control brings up more stuff. <laughs> and your control zero. Just control and mouse wheel 
makes that smaller or larger. The shift do. So do Alt. So Control and Shift bring up those two sub menus. And that's still too small. There we go. And I guess we should put something out over here too. And now we get the base root of our tree done. Let's get back to the use it for the front. Ah. So we can twist. Oh, that's neat. Not gonna go that crazy though. Well, uh, what was it? Brush. Just kind of want to make some little knots on the side of the tree here. You know, kind of show where a branch might have once been. There we go. Now I don't know how tall this is going to be or when it's going to be done. We'll have to scale that later. That'll come in handy actually in the next program. Um, hmm. Let's make some creases to kind of show bark. Now I am doing this with a mouse. If you have a tablet or something, you can use that if you want instead. Now you don't have to put creases in it if you don't want to. Like I'm just doing this to help add some detail. Okay, there's our gnarly little tree. You got to go down here. Now I'm going to go back to the inflate tool, make this really small. Just kind of inflate this edge a little bit, make it look like it was wounded, because you know, trees heal from infections too. There we go. Um, next up, go back to drag. And go. Now there was a way to mask. Masking. Control. Okay. Man, these controls are kind of similar to ZBrush. Well, that didn't work. Just mask out this area here in the middle. And let's sharpen it a couple times. Now Let's just, uh, oh, no, that doesn't work. Now, how can I invert this? OK. 
Okay, well, we'll do this the other way. Go back to mask. Actually, you know what? Just to make it easier. I'm going to add another cylinder just for this program. And I'm not going to see the skin color that it is. Go down to let's look at scale. Well, let's not worry about that. Go to transform. I'm going to put this in the middle, roughly. Like so. Oop. Let's do the top. Let's just respect to make it work off, I guess. No, I want the little red box. There we go. There. Now, I'm going to save this, but I need to trim these roots because I want a flat for this model. I could just say I want it to be flat. Um, let's add a cube. The reason I want this flat is so when it prints it off, I can glue it to like a base so you have a movable base for the tree or actual force scenery that you can remove from. Oh, just a little bit here. There we go. Now, if I can't, um, if I can't cut you know, like literally cut it out of this model here. I may have to go to another program and do it. Um, topology, maybe. Delete lower. See what that does. That didn't do anything. Hmm. Well, that doesn't work. I'm trying to go out and help. No, Firefox didn't like that. Um, We'll just save it as is and we'll import it and do it in the next program. Save it as OBJ. Oh, hang on a second. Scale and center. Uh, never mind. It's for import only. Why is it saving as a text pad? Well, let's save as STL then. Which we can use that. Apply. 
let's just save as STL. I'm going to do OBJ, uh, save file. Okay, this is Autodesk Max Mixer. Max Mixer? Mesh Mixer, there's the word. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my model from the downloads where I had it downloaded to. And if you saw briefly, it shows you the type of format. So, here's my model in Mesh Mixer. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to clean this up. So it's flat. Um, as you can see, we got import, you got actions, you know, sculpt, select, edit. So here's some of the other stuff's going to be. Um, there is some neat tools in here, I will say that. And of course, you got this here too, which will pick up errors or whatever. At any rate, go to Edit a line, or no, not yet. You transform this. Um, I want snapping on. There we go. Let's try that again. Just wanna, just wanna snap. Oh, there's my snap. 90 degrees, and then we're going to go up. Okay, let's accept that. And. Right, we're going to plane cut. Similar to um, uh, Microsoft's 3D Builder. Except this one's got a lot more control. And I want to try and get that little hollow out of there, so. But I don't want to go up too high into the model. So I'm going to cancel that. Or right, hang on. What's this? Nope. Uh, I'm going to transform. Disable. There we go. Accept. A lot of little micro steps. Then we go to plain cut. That should disable snapping. All right, I forgot. S for snapping. A is for a line or whatever. You got length, width. Flips that around. Or you can just draw a line. But we're not doing that. Nope. Give me, let me use the blue arrow. Thank you. It's kind of weird how the snapping is not listed here, but it's down here. Uh, What is that? That's not what I want. There we go. Okay, that's weird. Nope. Okay. Take it up, take it up, take it up, take it up, take it up. To about there. Then we'll hit accept. And there we go. We now have a flat bottom tree model. And go align. Click accept. So now it'll say flush. Now I want to go to um, analysis, inspector. And 
done. I do want to fix this down here though. We want to go to And these are your sculpting tools, by the way. Um, smooth brush. Oop, that's too strong. Add some laziness to it. Okay, that didn't really work out. What I can do though is go to Mesh Query. Nope, that's not what I want. In dimensions, that's what I wanted. As you can see, we're in millimeters. I'm going to go to inches. Uh, convert new unit. So I want let's do our height. Let's do about three inches. There we go. So now our first stump or tree is ready for print. And that's the paint's gonna hold the moss on top. And we'll hit done. And we'll hit file. Save as tree base one before I export it. I did save this earlier, but of course the recording didn't record it, just saved the blank space. Now we're gonna go to select. Well, that's not what I wanted. Go to sculpt. Or edit. Anyway, we're going to import. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that's not what I want. Mesh mix. Here we go. Let's bring in a mesh mix cylinder. Um, Do that. Click on this one, hit delete. Come back to this one here. It, uh, let's align it. No colors. Okay, we don't need that. Close that. Uh, go to edit. And we're going to transform this. So, no, I don't want that. Um, turn off snapping. Yeah, it's local world. Um, Lots of little extra work. Go 1.5. Yeah, this tries to make it all symmetrical. We'll go three. Okay, so in this here, like before, you get your brushes. I find it this is a little more annoying to sculpt in than the other web-based program. But it does the job. I'm going to move and make a bigger brush size. That's still pretty big, though, eh? Uh, 
Ah, we'll soon fix that. Okay, back to sculpt. Look at that stamps. Woohoo! Sculpt. Let's make some nice, uh. Another thing you can do too is, is um, you can, like, make your roots like a ton of rock or something as well. Tree roots go. That's uh, not looking as good as my last one. Oh well, fix that up later. And let's go up here. Let's turn on symmetry for a second. To kind of move this stuff in. Not all trees are created equal. Have a bit of a messed up knobby tree here. Turn that off. And I'm going to do something a little different this time. Now bear in mind when you start having limbs like this, like on my printers. It's going to automatically detect this and make support for it if I want to choose to do so. Or I can have a mesh mixer make a support option for it. As you can see, I'm basically doing this moving clay, 3D clay. And we'll pull this out a bit here too. That didn't work out. On this way. There we go. smooth by the way once again I am using a mouse you can need a pen and tablet for this if you have one might be a little easier actually okay great and what I don't mind to hit it now because I do plan to eventually print these off. I want them to sit flush on little removable um, circular bases, so when I make like a, say, okay, this area's a forest, um, that patch would be like, okay, well, I want to pull the trees off so you can say, yeah, but it's still representing its forest, but so you can get models in there, it'd be a little easier, you know? Or just them standing around on their own. Uh, let's do here, plain cut. So like before, bring it down. Flushing everything up uh, a little higher. Nope, don't want that. And accept. And then we're just going to go to a line. And there we go. We now have another gnarly tree. Which I will save as tree base 2. I'm replacing my old one, but I like this design better. So there you have it. Simple yet effective trees you can create and 3D print in two different sculpting programs if you so desire. And just take a note the programs I've used so far in these videos, you can pretty much make something in one, import it to another, tweak it here, import it back into the other program because each one has its own pros and cons. Now, in my next video, I will show you how to make some really interesting 
objects in Unreal Engine 4.